But how you been? What's on your mind? I don't know, man. I'm not sure where to begin this week. I mean, I love our audience, and you know, some of you guys are really switched on. But goddamn, I mean, there are levels of Spurg, and some guys seem to have dialed it to fucking eleven lately. It's like you see comments like, "You guys say we can learn game. What the fuck does that even mean? Do I have to buy a bunch of board games? Do I have to sit down and kill Sephiroth a few more times?" Do I ha why do I have to learn fucking Monopoly to get some pussy? Why can't someone just tell me every step that goes into getting inside a girl, up to and including that awkward uh, post one night stand cuddle where you're not sure if she actually wants a cuddle or does she want distance and how much aftercare and you know, what the hell do you do if she starts crying? Like, I'm, I'm starting to get why David D'Angelo had like a 10 minute fucking segment on one of his uh, Boot camps back in the day on how to wash yourself properly in the shower. It's like David D'Angelo, the original washer penis. And, you know, that they did, it wasn't like a small thing either, like use good soap. It was more like, okay, you have to make sure to use soap and carefully wash each body part at least three times because it's very difficult to get off all the grime and sweat with only a quick wash over. And it's like, are we going to have to start doing that? I mean, will we have to do a red morning on how to properly wash in the shower? It's like, have a, have a big, like, schism between the two of us on which fucking loofah to use? <laughs> like, half our audience goes with me because they think loofahs are for faggots, and the other half goes with you because, like, oh, be an idiot doesn't use a loofah. And, you know, you have to remember, please remember to vect your fucking loofah. And... You know, guys, I hate to be the bearer of bad news on this shit, but human interactions are messy. It's like there's no perfect strategy guide to 100% perfect completion of anything that involves human beings for a reason. I mean, humans are kind of fucking random. Like, I could teach you the London Day Game model, but even then, I'm sure someone would fuck that up. Like, first there is the stop, but I mean, what the fuck is a stop? Well, you know, you stop the girl on the street. Yeah, but how do I stop her? Do I wave my hands? Do I hold up a stop sign? <laughs> I can't afford to buy a stop stop sign because my life coach charges me 300 an hour to read my chakras and call me a faggot. Like, okay. When you see a girl, make eye contact, approach her at a 45 degree angle from the front and make sure she knows that you're coming. The guy's like, what do you mean make eye contact? Well, you look at the girl and you ask, yeah, but what if she's cross-eyed? Which eye do I pick? What if she's wearing sunglasses? God, this game <laughs> shit doesn't work. Fuck it, I'm learning MBTI. I hear girls smell nice, and I'm going to start running Joe Biden game. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you to read the rational mail and, you know, Bang and Hartiste and Ironwood. All good stuff, but I mean, it can get confusing because despite what certain horoscope proponents who talk like Bakken and think like an unmedicated schizophrenic will tell you, the red pill is really contextual and nuanced. It's not a one size fits all in practice. That's why Mystery ended up with like 47 mental breakdowns on different points over his oneitis. I mean, it's called the descriptive praxology for a reason, and those content creators who actually understand why. It's very difficult to give prescriptions beyond like really basic shit, like don't look like crap, don't eat like shit, don't act like shit, and don't do dumb shit. Then again, from, from like a moral perspective, if I'm going to be really ethical about this, if I have to tell a man not to eat paint chips, is it really moral of me to enable them to reproduce? Or would it be better if you just kind of chlorinated the gene pool a little bit right there? Like, <laughs> it, it depends a lot on what are you and what do you want? Like figuring out what you want depends on actually spending time getting to know yourself and having an idea of what you want your life to look like. I'm not saying you have to have everything figured out. I mean, none of us do. And I don't really care what you want to do. I mean, hell, if you want to get fat, marry a single mom, get locked up, adopt the kids she had, had with Tyrone while you were in lockup, and just sit around eating crayons all day, I don't really give a shit if that's what you want your life to look like. And, you know, I get it. Figuring out what you want is hard. And it's especially hard if you, like, never leave your house. You spend all day on Twitter banging on about how great you are on Twitter. But not getting out there and not taking the good with the bad, it won't help you develop a personality. 
And, you know, you can always tell those people who've spent way too much fucking time alone and never, you know, going out there because they turn very, very crazy because they, they're just walking around in their own head all day and they never have any kind of reality feedback on, okay, dude, that's a little bit too spurgy. Can you dial it back to an 87? And, you know, I, some of these guys are like four-year-olds. It's like, hey, li hey little Jimmy, you want to try some of dad's pate? Jimmy no like pate. Did you ever taste it? No, but I know I don't. No, but I know I don't like it. But you have these guys who's bought, who bought coaching from every guy they can in the Soyosphere, plus courses and books. And, you know, thank you for buying Gendernomics and Building Value, by the way, now available in audio format. I really appreciate you supporting me, myself, and other men trying to make a difference. However, sometimes you get these guys, and they're like the male version of the 35-year-old single, no-kids corporate bitch. It's like, they give you a resume, like, I'm working on a million, got my six-pack game down, approaching the 1.2k powerlifting total, visited 18 countries in 14 days, got my MBTI uh, game down, I read every book ever written on game, I watched the entire 21 hours of David D's deep inner game, and I even suffered through that train wreck of a boot camp style called the Annihilation Method, because it annihilated the will to live of every motherfucker who paid, like, 3k for that shit. <laughs> and then you ask them some simple questions like, why did you buy that? And what was your goal by doing that? And the answers always end up being these non-committal, abstract kind of spins and rationalizations for why they did it. And there's just no reasoning behind it. Like, <laughs> this space is filled with grifty motherfuckers who are more than happy to tell you everything that's wrong with you and how you're supposed to be a high-value man in their eyes. I mean, their prescriptions is usually like, be me, which is reflected in their feeds because it's so self-centered and solipsistic. It's all about their life and what they're doing. And it's very rarely about, you know, who they used to be, how they moved forward, the steps they took. And Rick said it the best, like, wouldn't you want to trade lives with these guys? And, you know, I wouldn't. And I don't think most men do either. And this space is full of guys who will tell you what's wrong with you and are then happy to sell you the illusion of a fix. It's like Microsoft selling you Windows, then charging you 297 bucks for the service pack to fix all the bugs they ship the software with. And you know, to make it worse, let's say despite the fact that we have one-eyed men shilling courses and coaching to blind men on how to pass eye exams, once you do make it past that eye exam by the skin of your fucking balls, these same motherfuckers and a bunch of other motherfuckers are happy to line up and tell you what exactly what's wrong with what you're doing and what you should do now, now that there's less shit wrong with you. It's like someone selling you a course on how to make a million dollars, otherwise you're a soy cock whose wife just got gangbagged by a team of basketball players she rented off Don't Be Dot Soy. And <laughs> make that fucking million, they could have donated all to whatever pet charity they have, like the Salvation Army or Save the Environment or Marrying a Single Mom. Like, they sell you on doing a ton of work for a result. In spite of the odds, you get those results, and now you don't even get to enjoy them. It's like learning game, but once you get the girl wet, wild, and ready to take dick in your place, a fucking pastor shows up like, young man, you are ruining nice-smelling women. Put a ring on it first. All the while, the chick is screaming for you to dick her down, so the priest bites the bullet and dicks her down in front of you while selling you a $500 membership to the How to Get Married and Be a Virtuous Man Club. <laughs> and you know whose fucking fault this shit is? Like, I'll accept my share of the blame as someone who should have done a better job at gatekeeping and, you know, trying to warn about some of these people instead of, you know, just letting it slide and let, leaving it up to the audience to figure it out. And... Mostly, though, it's kind of the audience's fault. Like, the audience don't know what to do. They don't know when to do it. They don't, sure as shit don't know why they're doing it, but they want to do it. So they are sheep looking for a shepherd. So they pay for moral advice from Charles Manson. They get some masculinity advice from Liberace. Mm. They get some fitness advice from the cake boss. And then maybe if they luck out, they'll get some relationship advice from Chris Benoit. And finally, you know, to become the leader of men, they uh, they go and get a leadership course for a man whose only leadership experience was when he led a bunch of other fat dudes to storm a cheesecake factory. Cheesecake factory. I can't believe you tapped into the Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs>
Like, fuck vetting your woman. Vet your fucking advisors. Like, <laughs> this is why you need to know what you want and why you want to do it, because then we can actually help you. It's like a great sign for not to deal with a person or buy anything from a person is when they start by telling you why you should do something. That's something you should have to figure out on your own. Once you get that down, by all means, find a guy who can bridge the gap from starting state to desired future state with concrete objective results based information. Like, here's how you go from point A to point B. But if a guy starts off by insulting you, then offers a product so he'll stop insulting you, that's not self-improvement. That's a fucking protection racket. It's like, I don't want a hundred thousand crawls running around there. It means more competition in my niches and more expensive drinks. I want guys to make the lives they want to live, not the lives other men think they should live. I mean, this is kind of what we mean by mental point of origin. Like, what the hell do you want? And you may not even have to come up with a good why, but if you know roughly what you want to do, the explanation for why will come as it goes, but at least, you know, at least avoid ending up in the position where, like, your life is like one long episode of man versus food, because that's not a good look on anyone. <laughs>